God has commanded us, God has commanded you and me to be wise, to live wisely. So the question is, how do I get wisdom? For example, there's Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4, 7 says, get wisdom. Ephesians 5, verse 15 says, be careful how you live. Don't live as unwise, but live as wise. So again, the big question is, how do I get wisdom? I want you to think about Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. I'm sure right now, maybe you're trying to answer that question. How do I get wisdom? Uh, God's word also tells us, hey, if you want wisdom, ask God. Ask God to give it to you. He will give wisdom to you liberally, freely. But still, how do I get it? And how do I know I'm getting it? Let's listen to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Really, really super important. And again, it's answering this question, how do I get wisdom? Proverbs 13, 20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. There's a warning there, isn't there? To be careful the company you keep. But does Proverbs 13, verse 20 help answer our question, how do I get wise? How do I get wisdom? And if all we had was Proverbs 13, 20, how would you answer? It seems like the answer is, if I want wisdom, I need to walk. I need to spend time with those who are wise. And of course, I think maybe that begets another question. How do they get wisdom? Well, it may be that they have spent time with people who are wise. I was thinking more about that today. How does anyone get wisdom? And I think you would agree, Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, 20 is instructing us to be careful who we're spending our time with or how much of our time are we giving to people. It would seem like I need to make sure when I look at my time and the time I'm using to spend with people and I am to spend time with all kinds of people, would you agree or not? We should be spending time with unbelievers. It's true, yes, we should be spending time with unbelievers. But who should be getting a lot of my time? It seems like I should be giving a lot of time with those who are wise. I should not be spending more time with those who are living foolishly. I need to be careful about my time disbursement. And when I look at my time disbursement, I need to make sure I am giving more time to those who are wise. Why is that? Because of Proverbs, thir Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So even as a believer, I need to be warned. Be careful the company you keep. So how do I pick out a wise person? You know what came to mind was Galatians chapter 5. It's right around like verse 22, 23, I think. It talks about walking by the Spirit, those who are walking with God. And those who walk with God, those who walk by the Holy Spirit, who are submissive to Him and His leading, how do, you, how do you walk by the Spirit? It sure seems like it's those who live an obedient life are those who are walking by the Spirit, seeking to please God in everything they do, living according to His commands. Well, in Galatians 5, there in the 20s, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Let's just read it. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verse 22. This is the produce of walking with God. Galatians 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It seems like the person who has that fruit is a wise person. Agree or disagree? The foolish person described earlier. In verse 19, the foolish person is that who lives according to the flesh. That is, not according to how God wants you to live. 
that person sexually immoral impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalries dissent, dissensions divisions envy drunkenness orgies and things like these so not an exhaustive list but when you look at the wise person and the foolish person who looks like they're living peacefully who looks like they're at rest it's the wise person the person that looks content and there's things to look for in a wise person things to look for are, are this in a wise person do I see any love? Do I see any joy? Do I see any peace? Do I see any patience? Do I see any kindness? Do I see any goodness? Do I see any faithfulness? Do I see any gentleness? Do I see any self-control? And how are they getting that fruit? How are they growing that fruit? Well, that comes within spending time with that wise individual. So my encouragement to you with this fighter verse is to look at who you're spending time with. The Bible does encourage us to spend time with people. Hebrews 10 comes to mind, I think around verse 25. Don't forsake the gathering with other believers. Don't neglect that. I was thinking about a group of guys I spend time with every week. They are men I would look at and say, those are wise men. And Proverbs 13, 20 says this, as you spend time with them, their wisdom will rub off on you. If you want to get wise, spend time with wise people. So I think we've answered two questions. How do I get wise? And what makes a wise person? That's a, the wise person is the person walking with God, who is learning from God, who is living according to what God has said. And the person that lives according to what God has said produces fruit. And look at that fruit of a person's life. Those are the kinds of individuals we need to surround ourselves with. But that does not negate the fact that I do need to spend time with unbelievers. And unbelievers are those who live foolishly. How else are they going to get wise unless they too spend time with wise people? But I need to make look at the disbursement of my time and see how much time am I, am I giving to all kinds of people. I need to make sure I'm giving more time spending more time with those who are wise and living wisely.